Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile. Now, I'm going to discuss a man that I think could be on the brink of something special. Whether it's this year or not, we'll have to wait and see, but I'm a big fan of him. And I think so often we talk about guys that we've spoken about for years and years and we discuss whether they're going to go up a bit or down a bit or continue it going. It is exciting to discuss someone that could be the next generation style of premium. I think it's a matter of time before he does get to that level. But whether it does be in 2019, well, that'll be the question. Alex Witherden is the man. Now, there's a lot of positives on this piece of paper in front of me. I'm going to try and not be too biased because I'm a massive fan of him. I've really liked his development over the first two seasons at Brisbane. I love what he brings to the field in terms of his ball use and the role that he plays at Brisbane, you know, for such a young fella. He is the man that they love the ball in his hand. You know, him and Rich, and obviously Hodge is a safe pair of hands too. But with it, and is that next guy coming up, and he's very capable of winning plenty of the ball and distributing it nicely. Now, roll through a few numbers in terms of averages. Burst on the scene, 87.1 in 2017, with just the nine games. Last year, a bit of a plateau season, 83.8. But he did his hammy, I think it was, late in the year. So technically, if we take that score out, which was 13, he did it quite early, then his average goes up to 87.4 from 20 games. So more or less the same over a bigger sample size in 2018. So he's only 20 years old, 30 games. He's priced about 450K, obviously defender. So it is early in the piece in terms of a guy becoming a premium but I think more and more now we do see these draftees in their third and fourth seasons become really really good premiums just with the way the under 18s is and Brisbane are a bit of a buzz team he's going to be handed responsibility furthermore on his stats just a bit of a breakdown he had six tons top score of 131 scores of below 80 he had eight of those did have a 42 and a 43 and Scores of 115 plus he had three, and uh, the high score of 131, as I mentioned. Um, now, look, he is young, and we did see inconsistencies, and we may well continue to see them. They are the cons. You know, he's a young man in a potentially poor side. It's tough to say. You know, they've been down, but there's a lot of positivity surrounding Brisbane. They are a team that many predict will go up. How far up? Very tough to predict the AFL ladder at this stage of the season in this modern era very tough to predict it so they could be anything but the fact is he is still pretty young so there could be inconsistencies can we bank on him to be a premium very tough to say we'll need some encouragement through the pre-season but I'm going to give you some encouragement right now because there's a lot to like about him and there's plenty of reason to put him on your radar reason one he's nicely priced a few points off with that injury and he's already well below the 90 so you're getting him far unders in terms of looking at a lead or a sicily and a lloyd you know those guys are going to be up and about but you can't start them all particularly in the back line you don't want to throw around too much cash because sometimes the back line isn't always the best point scoring range you do sometimes see those guys like lloyd and, and lead all the guys i just said simpson's another you can see a lot of really good scorers but it certainly can't hurt if you want to do free up some cash then sometimes the back line is a spot where you can do it because you can take a guy averaging 93 94 through most of the season because you can probably accept that at d6 come season's end so i think that's where the back line does warrant you know there's a little bit more of a lower ceiling in terms of what we'll accept for a premium now he is the kick-in man, and don't forget that in 2019 it'll be even easier to just run out of that square and kick it and get a touch. So that's going to be extremely valuable for a guy like Witherden. He takes 50.8% of their kick-ins already, so it's 126 kick-ins across a year, and on 52 occasions he played onto himself. So that's about 40-odd percent. Now, you would imagine that number's going to go up, I think he'll take even more kick-in duties. You know, Hodge probably take a step back. Witherden naturally going to take on a bit more responsibility. And I think they're really grooming him as that man who is the running guy from the back line. Now, he was touted the next Brendan Goddard in his 
debut year. You know, big raps on this guy. And he has a great kick to handball ratio. We know how important it is to be kicking the ball and hitting the target. Super coach loves it. And I think that's a really nice recipe for a rebounding defender in our super coach world. You know, he really is the guy that they want the ball in his hand. He's going to get plenty of handball receives, plenty of those switch kicks. You know, it's it's cheap to an extent, but they want the ball in his hand, and it's for a reason. You know, he, he wins an easy ball, but you do want your best ball users getting it out of that back line and hitting a target, and he's the man. So I can only see those numbers going up. He averages low 20s in terms of possessions. I can only see these numbers going up, and they only need to go up a little bit. We only need five, six, seven points to really make this selection good, and I do feel this guy has the ability to certainly go mid-90s and beyond. Now, I don't want to promise too much, but I think he's got it in him. Whether that'll be next year or not, we'll wait and see. So that kick-to-handball ratio, um, what was it last year? 16 kicks he averaged in 6.4 handballs, which underlines he's a guy that backs his boot and is not afraid to take on a really nice kick. And effective kicks, well, they're gold in the super coach world. So I do want to talk about his stats. I mentioned disposals, uh, marks 7.2 a game, rebound 50s 4.6. He could definitely tackle more, just average one and a half of those. Two and a half in his first year, so that dropped off a little bit. But I think that's his blueprint. He's not going to be a big tackler, as I said. It's a bit like, you know, we've seen those Heath Shaw types that the team just love the ball in his hand and they give it to him. You know, he's not exactly racking up too many pressure points or clearances or anything like that. But he is getting high uncontested ball, high handball receives, crossing it to him, getting a few marks, and then he uses it and maybe takes on a braver kick because they back his skills. That's going to be his blueprint. Now, an interesting thing I wanted to compare, and it is fun to compare to guys of years gone by, and it is a former Lion, Sam Doherty. Now, of course, painful for us to mention him in Supercoach Land because, again, he has gone down, which is horrific, clearly for him, and super disappointing for us and all Carlton fans because he's going to miss more footy, and you hope that he can find his best footy again when he does come back. Very disappointing. But I did want to talk about a few of his numbers because we saw him up his average from, I think it was about 88 to possibly 108. Now, I'm not going to go saying he's going to do that. And when Doherty did break out, it was his fourth season. It'll be Witherden's third. It was Doherty's third as a blue. So read into, the what, read into that what you will. But he did have you know an extra season under his belt. And that can sometimes be the difference when it comes to breakouts. So I want to compare... Obviously, Witherden's first two seasons to Doherty's 2014 and 2015, just ahead of him breaking out in 2016. Now, the kicks, Witherden, 15.9 and 16. Doherty, 12.9, 13.7. The handballs, Witherden, 7.7, 6.4. And Doherty, 5.6 in 2014, 7.4 in 2015. So they're mirroring those sort of images in terms of they're the kicker, they back their skills, and following that sort of a blueprint. Tackles, similar, 2.6 and 1.6 for Witherden, 1.9 and 2.7 for Doherty, similar types of players. And the Supercoach stats, 83.8 and 88, 87.1, as I've already mentioned for Witherden, and 76.8 and 87.7 for Doherty. Now, we did see him explode somewhat unexpectedly from memory, I don't think many people had Doherty that season and not many saw it coming, but he was touted, you now what was he, pick 12 or something like that, good ball user, all that sort of talk. And there's been a bit more hype about Witherden, but certainly I think they both have similar traits. And I'm not saying he's going to go and average nearly 110, but I think Witherden has the ability to average three figures in his career and I think he's definitely worth considering. You know, it's only January and he's well on my radar because I think at 450 or 455, you can really say 50, 60, 70, 80K and you could potentially get a similar return. Now, there's clear downside. You know, I've pumped him up big time. Obviously, being a youngster, there will be inconsistencies 
is he going to produce big numbers and then have those 40s again? I'll do a bit of breakdown of his season. Rounds 1 to 6, he averaged 96.2. Rounds 7 to 11, 62.4. That was when those 40s came in. He had a 60, really poor. And then rounds 12 to 21, 95.3. Now you can dissect and dig up numbers in any way you like and you can sometimes make a guy look better than he is on paper. But that shows that he had a really poor five weeks in the middle and average mid-90s for the rest of it. Now, it all works in together. He may have scored better late because he had a quieter patch and vice versa. You know, maybe he had a quieter patch because he had a great first half of the season, he tired. It all is relative, and at the end of the day, you've got to look at their overall season average. But it is food for thought, and it's interesting to see those little breakdowns. It shows he's capable, and for a fair chunk of the season. Um, so I really like Witherden. It's much safer to just go with maybe a Simpson and um, a Zach Williams and a Laird as your top three defenders or something like that. It's far safer. But if you want a bit of a point of difference, you want to back a guy in like Witherden, you think he's really ready to explode and take on a great role and really up his ante, then, you know, he could be your man. It is always safer and, and it's a bit more of a risk because when you look to go for a semi-breakout contender, you know, we're not looking for a massive boom from Witherden, but we would need a breakout, then you leave yourself open. There's a lot of pressure on that selection because you've gone, oh, geez, I've gone away from the pack, I need this guy to go well, or I'm going to look like a bit of a tool. Not only do I need him to go well, I need him to go well in the first four or five weeks. You know, he doesn't even have time to ease into it. So there's pressure on the selection when you go a bit away from the pack. But at this point in time, he's right in the mix for me. I think particularly when we have that, you know, tight squeeze for coin with our Ruckman. You know, some people talk about starting two guys who are around 700k, you know, we're going to spend 700k on one Ruckman, surely. I don't think we've done that for a long time. So there's going to be parts of your ground that you need to find coin and save a bit somewhere. And maybe maybe it's your back line. So I think Witherden's a guy that from sort of a, a pack between 400 to 450k, around about there, he's certainly the candidate for me that could really up his game to the next level. And we do see it sometimes. So... Certainly one to watch. I'm a big fan of him, as you can probably tell. But um, I will be interested to see a few of your comments. And I want to just put someone a little bit different out there at this stage of the year. Easy to talk about the same sort of guys. Easy for me to say that Fife's going to be great and Crips will be great, blah, blah, blah. But I thought, you know, just give you something to think about. Put him on your radar. Monitor him. See how he goes. Definitely worth considering. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all going well. And uh, Obviously, the cricket didn't go too well, but we'll move uh, swiftly onto the tennis. And then once that all sort of ends up, then um, you know, really footy does just go nuts. Once February kicks in, we all move on to the footy sort of stuff. So thanks again for tuning in, and I'll be back soon. Cheers.